Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 34. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cashflow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm glad that you are here and joining us yet again uh, for another episode. Whether you're joining us for the first time or the 101st time, make sure that you've gone over to learninvestingnow.com. That's again, that's learninvestingnow.com. Many of you ask, how did you get started in real estate? And that's what I did. I had to learn investing and well, now. But more importantly, uh, I learned to be a wholesaler first. And what I did there is what I share with you over at learninvestingnow.com for absolutely no cost. Go over there. You can make sure that you take advantage of the free information that you have, and you can probably get a few deals done as well. As you know, uh, we've been honoring uh, one of the greats, Zig Ziglar, uh, all month here, and I've got uh, yet another individual who's been influenced, whose life he has touched, and and what's important is that you understand that that there are common areas uh, to being a person of influence and significance, and you can be that very same person. Yes, you're going out there right now and you're probably looking at how do you take down your first property for cash flow? Well, it it's the same whether it's the first or the hundred and first. You have to become a bigger, better, different person. And today we have a very and special person, uh, in my opinion. If you haven't heard of him, you will soon. Uh, I want you to welcome a man uh, and, and who has done more things than you could possibly imagine. We don't have enough time to go through his entire resume, but suffice to say, he's written like not just one or two books, okay, but more than 42 books, more than 19 languages uh, with his books. And they, they span a wide variety uh, of topics. And what's amazing is that he's still going. And he'll talk to you about some of that today. So I, I definitely want you to give a warm welcome uh, to Mr. Greg Reed. Greg, are you there? And the crowd goes wild. Hey, so <laughs> Zig Ziglar, why did you pick that topic, by the way? Well, what happens is, you know, Zig is an important person in the sense that you know he's touched a lot of lives a a ton of lives and what sometimes we forget is we forget that you know some people are just born amazing and you know we run into people and we think oh he's always been that way or no well there's a process of mentorship there's a process of influence and occasionally you run into those superstars like zig who have affected millions upon millions of people. And I just think there are some people uh, who haven't seen him. Uh, November being the anniversary of the uh, of his uh, passing, uh, I figured it made sense. And then we spoke uh, with his son earlier. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear that episode, go back a couple episodes. Yep, we spoke with his son. Uh, and he had lots of great things to share and a bigger message that uh, the, the Ziegler Corporation is still trying to get out there because there are so many people who still haven't heard and don't know. And it just made sense. And I was like, you know, hey, I bet you there are other people that I know <laughs> who've been influenced by Zig too. So let's find them and let's talk to them so that people can know just how great uh, this man is. And one of the, there's also, there's a great saying, you know, behind every great man is a great woman. And his wife, Red, you know, she went with him all the time, was always behind the scenes and was an amazing supporter of his work and teachings. And I I found that to be one of the most instrumental parts of of his success for me personally, at least from the observation that I could see, having breakfast with him and hanging out and whatnot. It seems like she was always there, always supportive. And it seems like, you know, if we could have that in our daily lives, where could we be? It seems like so many times we have like 10 things going in our life, but people poke the sore spot, the one thing that's not going so good. (laughs) Well, it seemed to me as though that he constantly had support. Port. He had a rooting section by his lovely wife, who was always there to encourage him and to, to keep pushing him forward, even when he got tired. So that was just one of the, the neat things about him. And 
that was the I guess one of the things that I, I had asked Tom was about, you know, what left an impression on him about, you know, about his father. And he was like, he loved my mother. And it was just how he it, it wasn't just the words, but it was how he said those words that was like, wow, it was impress yeah. It was that obvious and that strong in such a very good way. Now, you spend a lot of time motivating and inspiring people to transform their lives, too. So could you share with the listeners a little bit about, uh, you know, who you are, kind of some of what you're doing now? Because you, you've got a very interesting story in life yourself. Yeah, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with my work, I mean, don't be uh, upset about that. I'm the most unfamous guy in the world. So <laughs> the deal is that I've been publishing bunch of books and movies and all that good stuff. But the, the main thing is is I've been working hand-in-hand hand with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Um, a lot of people know the book Think and Grow Rich, where I've been uh, personally selected to help carry on those teachings and update the principles found in the 20th best-selling book in history. So I'm very fortunate to be able to travel the world and meet the most powerful and influential people and sit down with them, go knees to knees to find out what they did to, to make it in this world. Now, I... Believe, I mean, you know that Zig Ziglar believed that uh, to have true success, we need to follow certain principles and that we have to build strong character traits. I know you would agree with this and, and uh, take on the subject. Uh, and I don't necessarily have to go into, you know, details about the characteristics of self successful people, but because you've, you know, obviously studied that for, for a number and anyone can pick that up from one of your bestsellers. Uh, however, I, I think our listeners would get a kick out of hearing your story on how you know, those books came to be and what are some of the characteristics of highly successful people in your opinion? Well, t take him back to Zig Ziglar. When he was on stage, he'd always bring this this old timey pump. It was an old well pump up on stage and he'd pump it and go, you gotta pump, you gotta prime the pump. And he would just crank on this thing. And the moral was, is that sometimes you have to crank and crank and crank and crank on that pipe until finally the water starts flowing. And once it starts flowing, it's hard to turn off. But most people give up after one or two or three or four or a hundred pumps. And it's the reality is it's the people that know that the water's there and they're just willing to do whatever it takes to get it to the surface. Those are the people that will be fed for a lifetime. And it seems like most uh, successful people on this planet has applied that same exact philosophy and principle for themselves. What they did is they went out there and they understand that, hey, there's going to be a dream, then there's challenge, and then comes victory. Unfortunately, most people quit in the challenge. So my quest was to find out what helped people to persevere and not give up through those challenging moments. Yeah, that that's so very, very true. And I'm sure also in your quest you've probably run into a number of people who – um, have also quit in, in during that challenge. What would you say is something that, okay, so let's pretend that, you know, the person listening right now is saying, you know what, I, I want to become a different person. I want to have different results in my life, whether that be through real estate, whether that through, be through business. What are some of the most common challenges that you've seen take people out? Uh, usually it's the fear of criticism or it's the fear of the unknown. But either way, it's fear. You know, it's one of the funny things. If I was walking down the street in Nebraska – now, I've never been in Nebraska, but if I was walking down the street and I tripped on a curb, I'd look up to see who saw me, even though no one I know would ever <laughs> know it. But the reality is oh, that's our instinct. We care so much about what other people think that it stops us from doing what we want to do. And what happens is that, unfortunately, most people get their – insights from people's opinions that don't matter rather than seek counsel. And successful people seek counsel and ignore people's opinion. Here's the difference. You know, it comes down to opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, inexperience, they've never done it. Or counsels based on wisdom, knowledge, they've already paved the way. If you go to someone who's never invested in real estate and let's say, a family friend, and say, I'm going to get into you know real estate industry, they might say, don't you watch the news? You can't do that. You're going to fail. <laughs> and you'll say, why is that? And they go, I don't know. You, you just will. Well, that's their opinion because they've never done it. If I go to you, Jay, and say, hey, I want to get into the industry, you're going to say, great. Before you get started, here's what you might want to know and give me counsel based on wisdom knowledge. Successful people only seek counsel, and they ignore people's opinions. Exactly. And what you know, what I've found, one of the most dangerous opinions is is my own ignorant opinion, uh, because occasionally that can get in the way uh, as well. What would you say to that? 
Well, that's true, but it's the same thing. All that is is that's your opinion. So, you know, whether it's other people talking or it's our personal self-talk, the realities are the most successful people found something called the knowing. It's not their hope. It's not their belief. It's not their wish. It's their knowing. When they know, 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 know in their heart of hearts that they're onto something special, they don't let someone else or themselves talk them out of their dream. And the key is to find out what your knowing is and then pursue it with everything you have. Jay, you're the least likely guy to be the real estate tycoon you are if you went back and looked at your history. But the realities are you <laughs> knew that you could do this. You knew that you could d- d- apply these principles. You knew it, and you actually went and did it. And I guarantee you had skeptics beforehand. And the reality is those same skeptics now are your, probably your biggest raving fans. Um, not not only biggest raving fans, but one has definitely contributed well over a million dollars uh, to the cause. Uh, but <laughs> in terms of investment, it's crazy. But you're absolutely right. It's it's amazing. All right, I won't keep you too long uh, from the rest of the interview with Greg. I wanted to make sure though that we cover a couple of basic things like we always do. We got to do the cash flow question for those of you that are looking to win a new copy of the cash flow creation system and you want to do so by increasing your financial intelligence, make sure you send in your answers to 800-689-1764, 800-689-1764, or you can email us at cashflowquestion at cashflowdiary.com. Now, last week's question was to explain one way that you can use real estate as a protection against inflation. So I'm just going to shout out a, a few uh, so that you can have some understanding of why real estate Uh, could be a very, very excellent and viable way for you to protect yourself. If you believe, and and this is key here, if you believe that your economy is an inflationary economy, you could use real estate in the following ways to protect yourself and your family or your friends. One, think about it. Rent. Rent, by definition, uh, part of the contract is knowing that the rent goes up, and it typically adjusts with inflation. Another way to protect yourself against inflation uh, would be to actually own the real estate. So maybe you just don't, don't want to rent it on a, you know, maybe a master lease or a sublease. That, that's one way you could do it. But if you just want it to own the real estate, well, as it sits there, it is valued in some currency. And even if that currency gets inflated, what ends up happening is because you own a real asset. That asset's value as measured in that currency also goes up requisite towards the amount of inflation. So you've got that type of protection as well. Another way to look at, you know, having inflation protection is just to understand that when it comes down to, you know, using and controlling real estate, you have this concept known as forced appreciation. You can actually do something to the property to make it worth more. And that's probably my favorite way is because it's it's not just a subjective value. It's not just something that, you know, could happen or might happen. It's based on something that you are going to specifically do to make it happen. And at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that you want to use real estate to protect yourself so that you always have the same amount of purchasing power. Here's probably my most favorite way, though, the most favorite way to protect yourself when it comes to, you know, real estate and inflation is to own a whole heck of a lot of it. (laughs) Not just every unit you own is a unit of production. That's how I look at it. Every unit you own is, is a unit of production. And if you own more units of production, those units of production can produce regardless of the economy. And if for some reason you need to produce, uh, you know, we start valuing cheap and we start trading in cheap or goats or whatever, you, you have the ability to own and control all of those types of things. Um, we don't have time, obviously, today to go into the, the benefits of leverage. And there's so many forms of leverage that are available with real estate, not just the financial stuff. But look up inflation if you don't know. Understand it because it can totally help you. So let's get to this week's question. For those of you who want to win a copy of the upcoming book, Cash Flow Creation System, uh, it's basically where I go through my entire business model, teaching you how to do it step by step. It answer the following question. What does triple net mean? When in real estate now, think about real estate. What does triple net mean? So if you want to answer the question, call into 800-689-1764 and 
or email into cashflow question at cashflowdiary.com. Now let's get back to the interview with Greg. Now, uh, something else that I know you are a perfect example of is Zig believed that there was an amazing power in maintaining a positive attitude. Now, I can't ever, I don't know that, you know, you ever get upset. If you do, you probably still do it with a smile. Uh, so you exude this trait uh, all the time. It, could you kind of elaborate on the importance of being always good? Yeah, absolutely. I think it goes down to a great quote by Abraham Lincoln. He says that people are as happy as they make up their minds to be. The realities are the only thing we have complete control over of is our attitude and our mindset. That's it. Everything else, outside influence, whether you know someone cuts you off on the freeway, or whatever. We have so little controls in this world. And there's an old quote. You know, it's a joke. It says, "If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans." And we understand that you know we can only have so much controls in our life. But the one thing we always have maintaining is is how we think of things. So since that's true, wouldn't it make sense to spend the most focus you can of creating the most positive solution searching attitude you can because by doing so you start looking for opportunity rather than focusing on the obstacles and for myself it's just a matter of choice but i choose to look at those the bright side of things yes uh, you do and having had such exposure to the bright side of things but would you say that that's a general trait uh for all of the people that end up making it in your books or that you end up interviewing for the napoleon hill foundation is that they they also have a positive attitude and share that same mindset? It's a matter of they found their knowing, and then they pursued it against all odds. They didn't let someone else or themselves talk them out of it. I, I can't say their attitudes, how they are. You know, when I meet with them, sure, they're very friendly and outgoing, but I don't know what they're like behind the scenes. But I do understand this, that they have a fixated goal of what they want to do. It's called stickability, the name of my latest book. They have stickability. They understand that stickability has paralleled with another word called flexibility. The most successful people adapt and adjust to their surroundings. So it's just like you. When you started doing real estate in one way, you adapt and adjust it to another once you know the market changes and, and you start looking for opportunities. That's what people do. Yes, for myself, I choose to have a positive mental attitude, but the main characteristic of successful people is they have that adaptability to get what they want. Now, you've mentioned two things that I think are interesting. You the 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 concept of knowing. Now, I, I have an understanding of what you know. I think you will mean, but f what is the knowing? And more importantly, how can someone develop that? Where where does that come from? Well, in three feet from gold, we created something called success equation. It's P plus T times A squared plus F equals success. And it sounds like a fancy math test, but it comes down to this. At the end of the day, you've got to find your P, which stands for passion. And you'll see these late-night infomercial guys. They say, find your passion and the money will follow. And that's a complete and utter lie. The realities are you could be the most passionate person about something, but if you're not good at it, you will fail. So if you watch American Idol, there's 100,000 kids show up. They're all full of passion, but most of them stink. So if you're passionate about something and you stink, you're not going to make it. So you have to have the P plus the T, which stands for talent. If you're passionate about singing and you're talented, you have a shot. But without the first A, you'll never make it, which is you have to take action. You've got to do something with that God-given gift. The second A is association. It's aligning so with somebody who can open the doors of opportunity. Again, that counsel. And then the F, of course, comes down to faith. It's about believing and knowing in your heart of hearts that you're onto something special. But if you are passionate about singing and you are talented, if you're willing to take, pay your dues and take action, if you align with someone in the industry who can open up the doors of opportunity and you had the faith that that's a journey you're destined for, you might have just found your own success equation. Exactly. That's that's so uh, – and what's really cool, I, I hope for those of you listening that you can hear, it's, it's one thing to – to feel confused it's another to get some direct uh counsel on what it's going to take to be able to go out there and make things happen and that's one of the things that i've always uh, appreciated uh, about being in and around um you know in, around you greg is the fact that you ha have a way of i mean i happen to like math so you know it being a fancy math equation was actually kind of good for me uh did, when i look at that it's like okay cool I, I can understand that i can understand how missing any one piece of that makes it very very simple 
Um, I, I would also say that, um, you know, there are certain skills that are necessary. And I, I just happen to believe that listening being is one of those more important ones. And I believe uh, the same was true for Zig. He, you know, he would said that listening is important in all that we do. Uh, what would you say? Uh, how important is listening in life and business uh, in, from your perspective? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's everything. You know, it's, it's not hearing, it's listening, it's tuning in. And, you know, so many people receive good advice, but few profit from it. And that's what it comes down to. It's it, it, hearing, listening, great. To me, the key element is the application. Because so many people, you need another, you know, CD or book or a seminar like a hole in the head. What we need to do is actually <laughs> apply the information we have. So the whole idea is it's like imagine a giant full-length mirror in front of you. If you were going to coach that person, what would you say? And then here's the big thing. Why not go do those things? And for ourselves, for some reason, you know, we don't apply our own counsel. And sometimes that's all we need to do. It, that is that is the phenomenon. You should do a book on that one right there. Uh, why we don't apply our own counsel, because that's that's just unique in and of itself. Uh, it's one of those unexplained. Well, Michael issues. Jackson did this song, Man in the Mirror, and that's that's what it comes down to. And it is that, that aha of going, look, we know what we need to do more than anyone else. Uh, it's just a matter of the application of that content. And you know, For myself, I take golf lessons. They tell me exactly what to do, but then I go golf and I do it the old way and wonder why it doesn't work. If you don't apply the great counsel and the messages and the teachings that we get, then you're going to continue to get the old results. And I know we're getting ready to wrap this thing up, but is there any other major topic uh, that we want to talk about? Well, I'm. I would. I think it would. You know, I know that you're making a number of films. You've you you've done some of those things. You you want to share a little bit about what some of the things that you're doing right now? Uh, we just finished uh, Think and Grow Rich: Stickability, the Power of Perseverance. So, for those of you who want to kind of check out one of my latest books, I, I recommend this one. It's really really cool. I sat down with Steve Wozniak, founder of Apple, the guy who invented the credit card magnetic strip, named Ron Klein, who changed banking as we know it. I sat down with the founder of the Make a Wish Foundation. I got to sit down with Peter Diamandis, who started the X Prize and changed space exploration for the future. I got to go knees and knees with some of the most powerful and influential people, and I tell their story in a real-life manner, and uh, I just really recommend people get a copy of that because it'll inspire you with real-life principles where you go, gosh, I get it, and these people did it. You know, I can do it too. Excellent, and the simplest way to get that would be? Uh, go to Barnes & Noble, pick one up, or go to Amazon.com. Uh, one of these days, people want to come to Secret Knock, my private event down in San Diego. You can meet these amazing people that you know we had an opportunity to go face-to-face -face with. You know, Right now, <laughs> the founder of Make-A-Wish, Frank Shankwitz, his story was so amazing. Uh, I sat down, and I got the rights to do his major motion picture. So right now, we're actually in the process of doing a film with him that's going to literally revolutionize the way movie industry is done, and it's going to inspire inspire people to realize that anyone can be a hero. I, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, that's pretty much all that we have time for today. We definitely want to thank you, Greg, for investing a little bit of time into the Cashflow Diary audience, because I know if they go out there, find the resources that they need, and as you say, uh, apply the success equation, they'll, <laughs> who knows, they'll probably be not only at Secret Knock, they could be a subject or a person uh, that you're actually interested in interviewing one day. So definitely appreciate your time uh, and for joining us. Hey, you're a rock star. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.